Okay, so for, for, for anyone that's joining us while we're talking, so um, Jackie and I are studio neighbors. She's only a few, neighbors, a few studios away. So it's kind of funny because as she talks, even if it cuts out on the video, I can still kind of hear her down the hallway. <laughs> still here. Still <laughs> here. Hey, I can hear Yeah, exactly. So it's like, oh, hey. <laughs> and we were talking right before the live and earlier today we were in a meeting where silk screening came up and that immediately made me think of you Adriana and that's what we were talking about of some of your background with art and so that's why you are on this live we're like let's just have this conversation over Instagram live because we always love having these conversations the background of our art and all of that and figured we would just share a little bit more so I want to know how did you get into silk screening? How do you know about this? Because I tried to get in courses at college forever, and it was always like the first class to fill out. It was like the highest in demand, so I know literally nothing about it. It's just super cool. <laughs> well, it's like fun story. I almost did like printmaking, screen printing, all that kind of stuff as a major in college, and oh. I'm kind of freaked out and made me change it to business because. Long story short, we'll go into that at some point, but basically they agreed to help me with my college as long as I did a business major, not an art school. So like, when I did that, they were like, uh-uh, you're changing it back. So there's that. But <laughs> uh, even farther than that, honestly, I have to say, like, my exposure to screen printing, silk print, I mean, all kinds of printmaking, honestly go as far back as I can remember. So by the time I was, uh, I came into this world, uh, <laughs> my grandparents already had a business in which they had screen printing materials and supplies, um, as well as fine art materials and just all kinds of, all kinds of goodness. Um, their specialty was screen printing, but they carried everything for all kinds of printmaking uh, disciplines. So I remember spending the summers there and, you know, this is more for, you know, fellow, fellow dorks on this one. But I'm like, I knew what speedball was when I was like four. <laughs> like, I wonder if that's where your hoarding of art materials comes from. <laughs> I don't know you. I always call Adriana like Adriana's art store because if I ever am something, if I art, I just walk around the corner to her studio and I'm like, do you by happen chance have this? <laughs> Different brands. Do you want this or do you want this? This one. <laughs> yeah, like you could come over and be like, so do you have any pyrrol red? What viscosity? What brand? <laughs> I probably have four or five different. Do you want high flow? Do you have one soft body? Do you have heavy body? All of them. Which one do you want? <laughs> helpful person versus like even anyone I've met at an art store like you have so many more options and background knowledge to the point where I'm <laughs> uh I need red acrylic paint I didn't even know there were this many options I just like stick in my lane and go there and then I go into your world and it's like totally over everything well and it's like like I remember I was just little and my grandparents would have say samples you know like customer samples of like yeah. oil or watercolor or whatever it is and i mean it could be like winston and newton like this is not cheap stuff right yeah. and after a while obviously you know these samples are no longer viable for sale or even sample or they choose not to carry it and here i am just a little punk right and they'd be like hey do you do you want this do you want to try it uh yes um so i think that early on and them explaining how these different things work it definitely has had an influence on me because now i can look at it i look at pigment codes i look at the different grades the different yeah. styles but it's like that's what they were doing so it just right. took me years to come back full circle and i'm doing something kind of similar but yeah screen printing and all those things like i remember just being a kid and they would have like the screen printing equipment and it would have like six screens or something. I mean, this thing like dwarfed me. Like I was just small, right. this thing's gigantic. And I'm like, ooh, and the dryers. And yeah, it was, it was cool. I was really lucky, you know, surrounded by all the time. 
It was great. I think you're saying all the different things they were like expired or whatever, like still good, but then you could test it and experiment. And it's funny you mention that because so my paint, this is like like maybe ten percent of what Adriana has. But <laughs> All of these colored pencils are actually old Prisma pencils from my dad's office. And so it's funny how we both have like that hoarding tendency because my dad is, owns his own architecture firm and my mom owned the firm. And so I like grew up on the architecture table, which like you can definitely <laughs> get metric lines, the architecture. Not at all. No, I can't don't I mean, see it. Yeah very not structured over here um, <laughs> a huge influence for me but it's funny like material wise because I guess it was like early 2000s that real conversion from doing all architecture drawings by hand converting to like AutoCAD and computers my dad had all of these like Prismacolor pencil like half boxes that were filled some were like okay, this pink was never used, but the blue was like this big from doing like sky renderings. So you'll see yeah. them, there's actually no blues. It's like every other color. <laughs> because they draw out these renderings by hand. And I was in elementary school. And so he was like, oh yeah, I have a few color pencils. Like, do you want some? And he just brought home a few. And he was about to throw out these boxes of Prism Not Prismacolor. And even in the, like, I guess it was like middle school or elementary school, even then I was just like, I need to hoard everything. So I was like, I organized them just like they are now, like by color I have on this table. And I was like, I'm literally still using them 20 years later. Thank goodness I had that. And like, that's what I did a lot of my artwork through college, especially in high school. That was like my main medium. So it's so funny how like both of our growing up influences are still fundamental to our work today. Yeah, like I remember my first box of Prismacolors. Like it was a black box and it had, it was like 36. No, I think it was even more than that. It was a pretty big box. And I remember being like, you know, glazy eyed when they go like, do you want this? Like whenever you stay here for the summers. And I remember seeing this black box and it had like all the colors like in rainbow, like the picture oh. of the pencils. And I remember trying them. I don't remember how old I was, five, six years old. And I was used to Crayola at that point, you know, the regular kid standard coloring pencil most kids have around that time or Sargent or whatever it was. And once I tried that Prisma, which has a specific smell too, and like the smoothness of it and the coverage and I mean, just the experience of it. I was like, I don't want my other coloring pencils. Like this is it. I know now, it's other things. Crazy. But those are, yeah. Yeah. And especially I think when you're a kid, like having quote unquote, like professional art supplies, it automatically like makes you take it more seriously and it elevates the experience and no matter where you are in your art career too, when you do invest in nicer materials or really putting that effort in, you can yeah. feel like some materials you can get away with it, but especially with color pencils, if that's going to be your main medium, like there's a huge difference. It's oh. great. Yeah. And it's, I mean, even in the studio practice, I do incorporate some different types of, I mean, you wouldn't call them colored pencils exactly, although the shape and the concept of them is the same. Right. Uh, some of my favorites are oiled graphite, and I, you know, do Ooh, some yeah. work a lot. So they're water soluble, but they also resist acrylics. I mean, they're just, they're just different. They're made by Stabilo, I believe. Um, but yeah, even in modern times, I think you're right. Like, you know, kind of going back to a comment you made a few minutes ago, there's that moment of, as a kid, you know, when you try professional or artist grade materials, it makes right. such a huge difference in your experience. Like, I get it. I mean, do you really want to give a five-year-old, like, a $40 tube of paint? That's Probably not. <laughs> but, like, at least getting them to experience some of the nicer quality stuff, not just the kitty stuff. I mean, it's just a huge impact. It's the kind of thing where it's just, like, I mean, some of the frustrations you would get, and I've heard this too with like musicians, for example, where they say when you grab an instrument, if you grab the kid one that's just a kind of not oh, so yeah. great, 
it, it will affect your experience with it to the point that it may deter you from pursuing it unless right. you're very tenacious, in which case you may stick with it anyways right and try to like right. perfect whatever you have but if you don't have that yeah definitely having like a nicer quality material could make a gigantic difference i know it did for me like like once, like once you raise that bar trying to go under it it's like i don't really want those temper things or i've had an acrylic i think it's presented too like i even went to like some summer camps that focused on art where it was like basically materials but just having it the presentation of it and the experience of involving yourself in the process was elevated so it's not been like you need to dive in all this money super young but being like okay here's your one canvas and here are your brushes and as my cousin we talk about you have to have marker respect and you have to make sure all of the markers have their <laughs> <laughs> He's like coloring he's like you need to have marker respect and he like lines all them up it is so cute but just yeah like showing that elevated and i think that's what both of us both of our like upbringings and that experience it was presented as like this is like a big deal and these are professional materials or like they recognize in both of us like our desire to elevate that experience so like we knew yeah. we it seriously and clearly we because they definitely made a distinction too which i think is important like one of my earlier memories of art was okay all right this was really bad something i really shouldn't have done i didn't know any better so i grabbed one of the watercolor sable brushes i had no idea back then it was about 75 us dollars this is in the early 90s, so you can imagine how expensive this thing would be. And I grabbed it, and I was like, it's so soft. And I'm, like, going like this, just stroking my cheek. <laughs> this soft. I mean, it's so soft. It was, like, real sable hair. Like, imported from England. I mean, this thing was, like, a big deal. It was, like, top of the line. But it had been, like, touching the brushes. And I was like, oh, this one's really soft, which now I know why, like watercolor, you know, depending on how you use it. A lot of times they, they use very soft brushes. So here I'm walking around and my grandpa was like, stop. <laughs> like, stop come, here. come here. And I mean, he was totally nice about it. The brush wasn't spoiled. Thank goodness, you know. Um, but he very nicely explained the difference between like that brush and the brushes that was allowed to use. And I was given an entry level artist grade one. So it was still leaps and bounds above the kids ones. But she, uh, yeah, he definitely made the distinction and, and made the time to say like, look, this is, this is why you can't have the $75 sample brush. But oh here's a five dollar brush, you know, that, that you can use and it's okay. <laughs> so I'm glad they made that distinction. I'm sure they did for you as well to basically say here is the ground. Here's what you're allowed to use. You can experience something nicer than just the kitty level, but still. Yes. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to find it. I have a tool. Uh oh. This uh oh. Do tell. <laughs> So in very architect fashion, I think my dad gave me this when I was probably middle school or so. And again, I was like doing the office and he wanted me to like have a straight edge, but he made like uh -oh. a very big deal of like, you have to take care of it, you can't bend it, you can't like scratch it up. Because again, they were like doing things by hand. So maybe it was like elementary school at that point. And like, if this line was like, if there was a like, dent in it they had to buy a completely new one because you can't have like a dent in a wall and yeah. they were, I remember I like put backpack for like a week and it got all banged up and I was like using it all the time <laughs> and I mean realistically I was a kid so like they probably expected that I would but I remember feeling so bad like I disgraced this tool and I bent it and I was like <laughs> so traumatized. I, I, have it. I mean, and it works fine for what I need it for. I'm not doing sketches with it, but it's so funny. Every time I look at it, I'm like, man, you gotta respect the tools. You gotta respect the tools. You do have to respect the tools. <laughs> like, seriously. 
I know. Oh, speaking of, I have paint that is drying on this that I need to get to. And I know we've probably held people on here a lot, but <laughs> we appreciate everyone going down memory lane with us and hopping on. I see that <laughs> yeah, we should definitely do this again. Um, maybe we'll do something next week and, and get together and share a fun story with you all. And um, yeah, if you have any suggestions to send us a DM and maybe we'll just uh, pop on a few minutes and say hello, share some fun anecdotes and uh, then we'll be on in our way. <laughs> all right. Bye. All right, bye everybody.